are all of these measures going to earn your vote? Do you expect them all to pass? I do, and, and yes, I will vote for them. I certainly vote for the first three, which is basically the Senate bill just split into three parts, supporting Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. We haven't actually, as you noted, seen the text of the fourth bill. I have been told what is in it. Uh, I am inclined to be supportive of that as well, but I'll have to see the text. And yes, it, it's a difficult process, but I do expect all of these bills to pass and then they will be merged together uh, when they go over to the Senate. So the Senate will consider all four as one. Just trying to figure out the process here, Congressman, because there was a bill that passed the Senate that included emergency funding for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, the Indo-Pak region, almost to the dollar that we have here. It also included an important border compromise that I know a lot of your colleagues worked uh, for months on here. Uh, now that we're doing this with a Republican-led House, it has everything but the border compromise. So yeah, one, one is this slight correction a there. better bill the, for the, Democrats? What's the correction? Yeah, the, 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 border, the border portion did not pass the Senate. There was a border portion that was attached to the bill that uh, Leader Schumer brought up that the Republicans voted down, and then they removed the border portions. The bill that passed the Senate had Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, it did not have yeah. the border provisions. So, okay, so look, so it's a convoluted process. I, I will grant you that. And it's convoluted because Speaker Johnson was trying to, well, as I like to say, appease the unappeasable. Um, he was trying to appease the, the MAGA portion of his caucus that didn't want anything on Ukraine. So he insisted on splitting the vote. It would have been vastly easier if we had just taken up the Senate bill and passed it but this is what the speaker said he had to have to bring this up. So he has it. He's brought it up. Now we'll go forward. Well, and there's a question, sir, now that the speaker has made his choice about what choice the Democrats may make if as a result of his choice, he actually is faced with a motion to vacate. And there are multiple Republicans who could potentially vote to oust him as House Speaker. A moment ago, we heard from your leader, Hakeem Jeffrey, saying that Johnson has not asked for help from Democrats. If he hasn't asked for it, is he likely to receive it? What are you hearing from your leadership? Yes, he is likely to receive it. I, for one, will not vote to remove uh, Speaker Johnson. And I know a number of other Democrats feel the same way that I do. There's kind of this coy little thing back and forth as to whether or not we say that publicly. I tend to be more blunt and straightforward than most members, so I'm not going to be coy about it. It doesn't serve the interests of Congress or the country to remove the speaker at this point, and he's carried through with his pledge to not abandon Ukraine, to give us a vote on Ukraine. And as long as he's done that, I'm certainly not going to agree with Marjorie Taylor Greene about who the speaker of the House should be. So how many Adam Smiths are there on the Democratic side of the aisle, Congressman? Because we keep hearing that there might be an arrangement for some of you to stay home that would offset the numbers that I presume Tom Emmer is gathering right now as majority whip. Are, are there enough Democrats to overcome opposition on the right? Yeah. I don't know for sure, but I'm very confident that the answer to that question is yes. I don't think any of us are going to be staying home. Um, I think we're going to vote. We're going to vote not to vacate the speaker, not to follow the lead of, of Marjorie Taylor Greene and the MAGA Republicans. So, sir, if you will uh, vote that way, there, of course, is the question of how the votes will unfold going forward, as you were alluding to the idea that you do need to see what is in the fourth bill, the actual text. But we know the ideas of things that may be included, including repo, see, taking seized Russian assets, using that to fund Ukraine's right. war effort. That's something we spoke about yesterday uh, with one of your Republican colleagues, French Hill of Arkansas. And this is what he had to say. We'll have you respond. We're not tying the president's hands. We're giving the president flexibility in using Russian uh, sovereign assets uh, that have already been frozen. We're going to put those in an account and that account can be used for the benefit of Ukraine, working with Ukraine and other financial partners uh, in Europe. This is a, a more flexibility for the president, not limited. Congressman, do you in principle support this idea? And is it as likely to work in reality as it is potentially to work in theory? Well, I think it'll work in reality. I am troubled by it. It'll work in the sense that 
we'll go ahead and grab a relatively small amount of money. I think the figure I saw was $5 billion that U.S. banks have control over. Most of this is in European banks. I'm troubled by the idea because, look, the global banking system is dependent upon a certain amount of trust. Now, we've frozen those assets because of concerns about Russia, what Russia has done in Ukraine, obviously. But if we undermine the trust that people have in the global banking system, that, that's a delicate balance. So I'm, I'm kind of undecided on that one individual idea uh, for those reasons. I'm worried about the impact, even though I recognize the benefit of being able to take that money and give it to Ukraine. Congressman, just to get back to something we were talking about here, and that's the future of the speaker. Are we going to be having a conversation at some point in the next couple of days about a power sharing agreement? Is there something that Democrats need to act to protect Mike Johnson? Or were you actually speaking out of principle in the hopes of maintaining some sort of order in the House of Representatives? In a shocking development, I was actually speaking out of principle. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking for a deal here. Um, Speaker Johnson has kept the government open. He put the appropriations bills on the floor, let us vote on them, kept, kept funding the government. He's now given us a vote on, on helping Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan. I mean, look, I do not expect that the Republican Speaker of the House is going to agree with me on too many issues, all right? Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to blow the place up as long as he's running it reasonably effectively and efficiently, and, and he's working with us. Um, he has shown an ability to work with Democrats in the House, with the Democrats and Republicans in the Senate, and with the White House. And look, I, I think that's what you have to expect. A democracy doesn't mean that you get what you want all the time. You have to have some respect for the institution in order to make sure it continues to function regardless of who's in charge. So it's a basic principle. I, I, well, don't, I don't think Mike Johnson has done anything that warrants his removal. Members of the Freedom Caucus are cringing as they hear you speak right now, Congressman. Don't you think that would weaken a Republican speaker to be saved by Democrats? Well, look, I mean, I don't know that he's like... Well, the, the honest answer to your question is, yeah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help him. But look, the people who are going to consider that a weakening event, they're not on his side anyway. I mean, they were upset when he kept the government open. You know, on a couple of occasions, they were upset when he put the appropriations bills on the floor. I don't think it's going to weaken him with the people who, who already support him. And the ones who don't, don't. OK, and they won't. I mean, what they want is they want to shut down the government unless they get absolutely everything that they want. They don't believe fundamentally in democracy. They don't believe the Democrats who got elected or the Dem Democrats who control the Senate or the Democrat in the White House should have any say in governing. And they're wrong about that. So I think Speaker Johnson is taking the right position. And those who view that as weakness fundamentally don't support democracy. Of course, part of democracy, sir, is doing the actual legislating. There's a lot more that goes on on Capitol Hill, though, including holding hearings and trying to get to the bottom of certain issues. And I want to get your take, knowing that you do join us uh, as a representative from the state of Washington, where Boeing has a rather large presence. There was a whistleblower testifying in the Senate today around Boeing's safety culture. Are you concerned, Congressman, about what is happening at Boeing or the impact inquiries into this could have ultimately on, on the fate and trajectory of that company? Do you expect that a legislative effort could actually be produced here that will affect it in some way? Yeah, I'm really concerned about it. Look, I mean, I, you know, I grew up in, in the city of SeaTac. And when I grew up, I used to joke, I thought everybody's father worked for Boeing. Boeing has been a part of my life literally from the day I was born. Yeah, a very respected company that has really gone through some troubles recently. I think they've made some bad decisions. They have not led the company the way they should, and they should be held accountable for it, and we should work to make sure that they fix that and improve that. The company is not producing the product that they should be producing right now, and I think that is a legitimate concern for everybody, um, particularly, I would say, people from my neighborhood. That The 737 is made in my district. I have enormous respect for the workers there. They deserve to be better treated by the company, and we deserve to get a better product. And yes, Congress clearly has a role in taking steps to make sure that happens.